Hey everyone, my name is Joseph and I would like to thank you for joining the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago for this virtual tour to the forts of Port of Spain. We will be starting at the corner of South Key and Broadway where we will find Fort San Andreas, then up the beautiful hills of Lavantil to Fort Picton and to Ruka's Observatory, also known as Fort Chacon, and then ending across in Fort George. Each site has its own unique story, so join me on this virtual journey to the forts of Port of Spain. Fort San Andreas In 1787, Fort San Andreas was built by Governor Chacon, who was dissatisfied with the weak defenses on the island. The fort had five cannons and was constructed on an offshore rock linked to the mainland by a wooden bridge. In 1797, Admiral Abercrombie came to Trinidad at the helm of a huge naval force. The small detachment at Fort San Andreas was rendered ineffective as the British fleet was out of cannon range and the landing party came too far west to be targeted by the fort. Given the hopelessness of mounting a defense, Chacon decided to capitulate, and so Trinidad passed into British hands without a fight. In 1813, a signal staff was erected at the fort and was used to relay messages with Fort George. In 1845, the Port of Spain Town Council approved the filling of the waterfront. Later, the shoreline was filled again and thus completely landlocking the fort. Fort San Andreas fell into disuse but eventually repurposed to house various government offices including the Harbour Master's office and the Police Service Traffic Branch. Currently, the compound houses Cannons, Engine D from the Trinidad Government Railway and the Hummingbird 2 that was used by the Labords to sail around the world. Fort Picton In 1797, British Governor Thomas Picton was now faced with the dilemma of defending the capital without building a multitude of forts. He was left with a small garrison and so he looked to the hills of Lavantil where he had a commanding view over Port of Spain, the flanks and the rear of Fort San Andreas. He built a stone martello tower with a diameter of 30 feet. White lime mixed with molasses and whites of eggs provided the mortar. Inside the fort was completed with baked bricks which made the structure even stronger. The interior housed living quarters for the garrison, various storerooms and the water supply. And on the roof, Picton mounted an 18-pounder and a 6-pounder cannon. The northwest facing wall was built over 6 feet thick, effectively making it cannon proof. And the southern side walls were 4 feet 3 inches thick. The entrance was strategically placed on the eastern side so that the fort could be reinforced while under attack from the other directions. On the 18th of November 1798, the St. David's Tower of Fort Picton was made operational. Choruka's Observatory, Fort Chacon Don Cosme Charuca was a Spanish naval officer and a scientific navigator. He was sent by the Spanish Navy to chart the waters of the Spanish colonies. Arriving in Trinidad on the 21st of July 1792, he established an observatory in Lavantil which was built by Governor Chacon near to the Roman Catholic Church. This sturdy structure was not to house arms and ammunition but to house telescopes and various navigational instruments. On the 2nd of January 1793, Charuka observed with great precision various movements around Jupiter and from this he fixed for the first time an accurate meridian in the new world. 
he later dismantled the observatory and sailed back to Spain. On the 21st of October 1793, Choruca accurately assimilated his observations, enabling him to link the new world with the old and fix an absolute longitude of the observatory at Lavantil, thus making geographical and astronomical history. In 1805, the astronomer was killed at the Battle of Trafalgar at the age of only 46. The site is currently occupied by a unit of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Fort George So guys, we're about 740 feet above sea level and check out this amazing view. It is not only beautiful, it's also strategic. Now when the British seized Trinidad from Spain in 1797, it inherited a weak defense and communications network. In 1804, Governor Thomas Hislop constructed a complex of fortifications at La Verge. It was named Fort George after King George III. These fortifications consisted of sea defenses, a series of supporting batteries, the York, Princess Charlotte, Abercrombie, and Cambridge on the lower slopes and Cumberland to the north above the fort. Considered unconquerable, it was the major defense position on the island, but it never experienced military action. In times of rumors of war, merchants of Port of Spain would store their records and valuables at the fort. In 1846, the fort was decommissioned and ceased to be a military establishment. In 1902, a signal station was designed by a West African prince and was established. From this vantage point, all vessels approaching could be seen and their arrival communicated via signals. These signals were sent via a series of flags and balls hoisted up on the pole, which would be spotted by signal men using brass telescopes. This operation continued until 1964. Now in 1965, just three years after Trinidad gained its independence, a major restoration on the building took place. So, this brings us to the end of this virtual tour to the forts of Port of Spain. I hope you enjoyed it. Now till next time, stay home, stay safe and save lives. Brought to you by the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding our heritage.